Okay, now welcome to the fourth video on clinical reasoning. In this one, we're going to talk about making a differential diagnosis. And again, you can see here the framework uh, for clinical reasoning that we're going to use. And we're going to talk mainly about this box right here, the make a differential diagnosis and all the little components uh, within. And so the objective, of course, is to make a differential diagnosis, but really we're going to describe the different ways that you can do that. And so the first one was, uh, what is most probable? And so your differential diagnosis should include something that is the most probable thing. So if you are uh, working in an office, and let's say that we're talking about a patient who comes in with dyspnea, short of breath. Uh, and what is the most common cause uh, of shortness of breath in your office? And let's say for this case, it's asthma. Now you can uh, look up articles that will that will show you different diseases and their prevalence, that is, uh, how commonly they appear in the population and that can also give you some information on how common certain things are so I pulled one up and it said that these are the most common causes of shortness of breath asthma being number one pneumonia and these other things as well so most probable is your first thing now in the emergency department that's where I work uh, we have to talk about what can I not miss what could be potentially fatal to a patient in the next say week to a month if, if we can if we don't miss it so in that same patient that is short of breath it might be a blood clot in the lungs or pulmonary embolus could be a heart attack or a popped lung that is rapidly expanding called a tension pneumothorax now these differentials that I'm providing here are very abbreviated lists for example only uh, so obviously I, there are probably a lot of other things that would be on this list but for this case you get the idea all right the next thing that we would want to talk about then is the use of mnemonics and these are memory aids that can help you uh, come up with a differential diagnosis and a popular one that I've seen a lot is Vindicate and what Vindicate does is it reminds you to look in all of these different categories here and I'm not going to read them to you because you can read yourself but we could go through each one of them for someone who's short of breath and you could say for a vascular maybe it's a blood clot in the blood vessels of the lungs uh, infectious could be pneumonia, neoplastic could be lung cancer, degenerative could be COPD, idiopathic, maybe we, there's a procedure and we pop their lungs, congenital, bronchios, bronchogenic cyst, lupus for autoimmune, traumatic, maybe they have a pulmonary contusion, and endocrine could be diabetes that causes it. So you can see how this sort of mnemonic will help grow your differential diagnosis. Another way to create a differential diagnosis is to think of what are the things in the area that could potentially explain that uh, those symptoms. So when we're talking about short of breath, we're talking about the chest. You're not getting the, the sensation of air in the chest. And so what in the chest could cause trouble breathing? And so we can do this anatomically. What's in the chest? Well, there's the heart, there's the lungs, and the blood. And what could go wrong? What are the other components of the heart? Well, there's lots of components to the heart, lots of components to the lungs, and the blood's got blood cells in it. That could be the problem. So. For the myocardium, you could have myocarditis with the vessels. You could have coronary artery disease. You could have valvular diseases like aortic stenosis. You could have problems with the conduction system and pericardium, etc. And you could have problems with each one of the different anatomical components in the chest that could cause dyspnea. So this is yet another way to create a differential diagnosis. Another, yet another one is to use a physiologic framework, and that is to understand how a disease works. What causes shortness of breath or dyspnea? So it could be caused by, you know, that sensation of dyspnea could be caused by not enough oxygen, too much carbon dioxide, too much acid buildup, or some central reason. And again, you can break these down into different categories, as well as different diagnoses that would go with it. So with hypoxia, maybe they have a VQ mismatch, dead space, or shunt, and these are some possible explanations. With uh, central causes, they may have anxiety, or they may have pain, like they got hurt, and that's causing them to, uh, to, to breathe fast. And so physiological frameworks. The expert clinician, so you can see the expert clinician down here, and you can tell he's expert because he's got gray hair and glasses. And the expert clinician usually will have an intuitive sense of what the patient might have. They feel it in their gut. And really what is happening there is they have built up these illness scripts that not only have all the, the uh, textbook knowledge, but it has that library of patients that they have seen over the years. And so now they can kind of find someone that smells like a like heart failure, that looks like heart failure, they're acting like heart failure, there's something about it. They might not even be able to explain why they know it's heart failure, but they know because they recognize this pattern before. 
And so pattern recognition is something that is more of an advanced skill. You're going to build this up uh, years and years and years from now, but it's just something that we should, we should understand exists. The expert clinician is not going to solely lie on pattern recognition, because pattern recognition, you'd probably forget something if you did, but probably use all of these different things that we just talked about. What is the most probable? Right? They'll, they'll say, okay, this looks like CHF, but you know, most probable is asthma. Could this be asthma? Uh, must not miss. Could this be a PE? Could this be a heart attack? Or could this be a tension pneumothorax? Uh, for the mnemonics, maybe they go through the Vindicate thing and they say, oh, could this be DKA, DKA diabetic ketoacidosis, a high acid buildup that's causing them to breathe so fast? They could use the anatomic frameworks and the physiologic frameworks as well in order to broaden their differential diagnosis. And so that's what we're going to do. That's You're, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to try to use all of these, except for pattern recognition because you've not seen enough patients yet to recognize any patterns, but you could use all of these, these one, two, three, four, five, top five ones. All right, and so the assignment for this one is to make a differential diagnosis. In your small groups, you're going to play the role of the the expert clinician and make a differential using all of the techniques here except for pattern recognition. Uh, you can use whatever resources you need. If you need to search the internet, go ahead. If you uh, to look for various frameworks uh, or, or other things, but do your best and try to just practice the process of making a differential diagnosis. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.